Hey everybody, my name is Tom, and this is what I'm doing today. I'm actually not in my house today, I am at my parents' house, and I'm in their basement more specifically. And what I've been doing over the past couple of years is I've been remodeling their basement. And before the remodel, my parents' basement looked like a time capsule straight out of the 70s. There was a dark wood paneling, carpet on the floor, a very poorly installed drop ceiling, and it was just dark and it felt like a small cave. And their house is fairly small and so the basement made up about half of their living space. On top of the bad decor and the poor design, it was also very drafty in the wintertime and just wasn't the most comfortable place to live. However, my parents didn't really have the means to do a full remodel. And so that's when nature stepped in and did a lot of the work for them. This house was built on a high water table. However, it never had a sump pump installed. And so one day, or maybe it was a series of days, back in early 2020, there was a series of storms that brought in a whole lot of water and it ended up flooding their basement. And it pretty much turned their basement into a total loss. It ruined the floors, it ruined all the walls, it pretty much ruined everything. And the only thing insurance would cover was the floor. And so after some discussion, we decided that I, if they would provide the materials, I would do the labor and I would remodel their basement. So we gutted the whole place completely. I mean, not even down to the studs. We gutted it all the way down to the cement foundation. And what was left was this bathroom back here. Since it was all tile already, it was not affected by the water. But everything else was pretty much destroyed so we tore it all out and pretty much started from scratch and the first thing I did was I rented a jackhammer and I cut them out a new trench for a sump pump now this basement has always had water leakage issues and as soon as I installed that sump pump all of the water issues went away once they were confident that the basement would no longer flood they went ahead and proceeded with the remodel the insurance did pay for the new floor, which is a nice tile floor throughout the whole basement. And I went to work uh, pretty much designing the layout of the basement, putting up the walls, um, and everything that you see uh, I, I, is pretty much what I did. So let me take you on a really quick tour of what I've done, and then I'll eventually get around to what I'm doing today. At the bottom of the stairs, you'll notice right away the amount of lighting that's in this basement. Like I had mentioned before, this basement felt like a, a kind of a dark, cold cave, and we really wanted to light it up. And so I installed these wafer LED lights and I installed a lot of them and they are a warm white color so they're not that bad and even if they do appear to be too bright we did put them on a dimmer and as you can see that they dim out pretty good and they're pretty easy on the eyes and so this is the main living area down here there was a nook that was installed here and that had previously existed I just rebuilt it perimeter walls this area behind this wall is a storage area, a brand new soffit around the HVAC system. I actually drywalled the ceiling in this dining area. New light, another nook back here for the china cabinet. And then I also built this room with, again, we have a drywalled ceiling and in that very back corner, you can see the sump pump. As you can see, this is a very well-loved craft room. It's getting lots of use. So that brings me to what I'm doing today. Um, I'm actually wrapping up this project, finally. Um, there had been a lot of delays. Um, we had some family members come and live in this space for a while, and while they were living here, I decided not to work on it. And so one of the last things I had to do, I needed to... Uh, rebuild was the staircase and the mud room up at the top of the stairs. So 
So I installed new paneling and new trim, and I'm still working on the stairs. So here are the stairs, and the stair treads are actually just made out of some 2x12s that I put a bull nose on. And as you can see, I've hidden the fasteners by plugging the holes created. And all that's left on the stairs is the risers and the handrail. And then I just need to put a cap on this half wall. And at that point, the, the stairs will be done. So I'm over here today putting the last coat of polyurethane on the stair treads. And so this is how I did it. I started off with 240 grit sandpaper on my sanding block and I sanded the surface lightly from the previous coat. The purpose of doing a light sanding between coats is just to give the new coat something to grab onto. And when I was done sanding the surface of the tread, I pulled the sandpaper off the block and I also sanded the front bullnose edge as well. Once all the stair treads were sanded, I came back with some tack cloth and I rubbed the tack cloth over the sanded surface to pick up any loose dust. And at this point, the stair tread is 100% ready for the next coat of polyurethane. To apply this polyurethane, I'm using a sponge brush and uh, each coat needs to be very thin. A thin coat is what is recommended by the manufacturer and it's what helps this polyurethane dry very quickly. I can walk on these stairs within 15 minutes at least to get out of the basement. Um, you're not supposed to be using the stairs for at least 24 hours. And so um, the only time these stairs will be used before complete cure is while I'm leaving the basement to finish up for the evening. If I did this again, I would definitely use a bristle brush instead of a sponge brush. I just feel that the sponge brush leaves too many small bubbles behind. And this varnish uh, dries so quickly that the bubbles end up drying in the finish. Here's a good look at how they look once the uh, finish has dried. Now we did choose to use construction lumber instead of something like a nice tread like a oak or something like that. A, well first and foremost it was because of the cost. I was able to build all of these stair treads for about the cost of one single oak stair tread. And B, Along with the kind of country um, beadboard paneling up at the top, it, this rustic, this staircase gives it a rustic look, and uh, I think it looks pretty nice. Now, there's going to be some touch-up required on on either wall, and of course, the staircase is not complete without the tread risers, but that will be a project for another day. Thanks everybody for uh, taking this journey with me, and. Um, you know, there's a lot of things I do that I don't do on camera, and so I kind of wanted to capture this project for posterity because it was such a large project. This is probably the largest remodel I've ever done, and I'm pretty satisfied with it. And I hope you guys like it too. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.